welcome back to the channel and in this video today we are going to be doing the round neck collar which is very beautiful i like it on feminine shirts there is this um look it gives that makes me really like it apart from doing the normal collar for your shirt you can do it on dress shirts you can do it on shirts you can do it on jalapias or caftans or anything you like and this method is what makes it look perfectly laid. Now I've joined my shoulder and I'll add a tip here. Sometimes you may want to top stitch your shoulder when you're doing menswear. You can do double stitches even if you don't have double needles. It has a way of giving it this kind of classic and unprofessional look. Especially in menswear when you're working with denim or jean material. So I've joined this and we will be fixing the collar on this. So you measure the neck round. Now I've seen people doing this. You fold the, they fold the neck into two and they just measure. I don't know how accurate that can be, but because sometimes you just don't know. You probably left one mm here and two mm here and there is a little bit of disparity there. So you don't know. So the best thing I do is take from one end and measure all the way onto the other end to give you the exact measurement. It's safer, it's easier that way so do not forget whenever you want to measure your collar for any kind of shirt measure from one end to the other just keep on moving with the curve so you saw we have a keep on moving with the curve and don't stretch because if you stretch it is going to be longer than what you need when you're finally done another tip i do is i be Another tip I usually do is I fold the back into two and I knot the center back. What this does is when I'm fixing my collar and I knot, I also knot my collar on the center back. So it makes me know if I have missed something and something is wrong so I can easily go back and retrace my steps and fix it right. So don't forget what I've told you today. Of course, if it's a normal shirt, it's either you have your button and buttonhole sides here or if it's a V-neck opening, you have your facing fixed already. I'm not focusing on that. I'm focusing on finishing a perfectly laid round neck collar. So let's start cutting. But to start with, I'll be creating the part, the template with um, paper first. For those who don't have this ruler, the, one of the advantages of this ruler is you can always use these lines to check if your lines are straight, if they're of the 90 degree angle. So when you have it straightly laid, you can use the other lines to check how straight it is. So you can always have your straight lines. So we have this and I probably have something a little bit longer than what I need. Here, then, my color length is 16.25. All the mathematics you don't have to go all the way just fold your tape roll into the two into two using the same measurement to get what you should have on the half so if i fold my 16.25 this is what i have my tape roll should be here somewhere like 8.1 thereabouts so which is good so i use this the height of your color of the color i want to do i think i want like 1.25 i don't want it to be too high this is the length here Okay, so what I do is, there are two ways. It's either you do it halfway, or you choose like, ha halfway is quite okay. Some people use the neck, um, the, the back neck measurement, maybe like three or three and a half, but I truly like my own halfway. So I'm gonna go four. From this point four, I'm gonna curve this up. So I'm gonna curve this. I'll use a pencil first to be sure I like the curve. So I don't like the I don't want to be too bold with this. So let's try that. I want the curve to be really good. I'll probably do this first. Check. Do I like it? Yeah, it looks good. So I can now go with my uh, permanent or however you want it. And I can do this now. After you do this, now what you do is, you know you have 8.1. So from here, you just measure your 4.1 again. The 4.1 is somewhere here. Like what you have from here to here is 4.1. Then I'm going to do this like this. You try to bend the same way you did when you were measuring your color and this stops here period and what else do you need to do your one and half the height of your color 
one and a half, 1.25, either way. Let's do 1.25, I think it's gonna be cool. You measure it all the way. This part looks straight a little bit. Then I like using my pencil to test first to be sure I have it. Um, because I'm teaching though, if I'm not teaching, I'm gonna go using the marker. Just use my pencil to get it accurately. So this you curve it up a little bit because it curves up. So go. Yeah, that looks okay. Then the next thing you do is this part should not be equal to this. You're going to move this in. Lest I forget, I don't like having it on same length. So another thing I'm going to do is uh, it's either you drop this down or you raise this up. Like this. I hope this is clear enough for you to see. I also use the marker to make it bolder. You raise this up. And that is to reduce the height of the collar at the end of the collar. Is that clear enough? So let's go back. Then you check the length you have. Something might have changed while you're doing all that. If anything has changed, we have a little bit more. So I'm going to bring this back here. Is that cool? Avoid freehand if you're not very good at it. Use your ruler, your curves and all that. So this stops here. Then I cut this and you use this to build your fusible, your interface, your fusible interface, you know, your stay, whatever you call it. you have it looking well curved and well shaped if you're not sure about it measure it all over again i mean the rule of tailoring is measure twice cut once there's no big deal in you measuring and measuring and measuring so you're perfect so you're satisfied and if you like you can as well put this on your neckline look at the mirror do you like the height do you like the shape if you don't like it Change whatever needs to be changed on it. You're not stuck. You're not a tree. You can always change things anyhow you want it. So if you, if you think the height is too much, reduce it. And when you reduce, whenever you cut, check the measurement. It could have expanded a little bit. If you want to increase it, just put the pattern on another pa on this pattern on another piece of folded paper and increase it a little bit. Or by the time you're cutting it with your um, stay or fusible interfacing, you can extend the length because this is just a template and I can always tell you, you can always reuse these things, keep them for um, other uses because you don't have to be cutting all over and over in case you have the same neck size. What you just do is write the neck on it, like neck is 16.25. So I'm definitely going to keep this. Anytime I have to work with a 16.25 neck, I'm sticking to this. And if I have to work with a 16 neck, all I need to do is just cut it and trim off few millimeters at the edges and there i have my 16 neckline which is very common in female shirts anyway okay so let's go ahead so this is my interfacing i'm using a, a soft fusible interfacing a soft stay for the collar because i don't want it to be too stiff in case i'm working with a silk material or um, a very soft crepe i usually i don't block fuse my collar because if i block fuse what happens is sometimes when you block fuse the collar um, if you're not working with denim, if you're working with denim shirt, for example, if it's a thick denim, denim fabric, if you block fuse, it's going to be too hard to sew. I have a few videos on colors. If it's not on my channel yet, if you're interested, drop it in the comments in the comment section, then I'm going to post them um, for public viewing. Why you don't block fuse? Um, if you block fuse your denim shirt, it's going to be too thick to turn over. The edges are going to be too bulky. So when I'm cutting my fusible interface on my stay, I cut it exactly the way this is. So that when I'm cutting the fabric, the allowances all around my stay do not have fusible interfacing on them. 
there is no interfacing on them there is nothing on them there so i can fold them easily and they do not create unnecessary bulk on my garment so do not forget and whenever i'm working with them let's say the very flimsy a very fragile silk fabric chiffon um co soft cotton what you do with those is you block fuse by block fuse i mean you fuse the whole thing you put your stay all over the fabric why do I block fuse my chiffon? They are very soft, they are fragile. So it's better you, you stay before cutting the collar. So when you're cutting the collar, you're going to add your allowances directly to that one. There is no point if you're going to, like for example, if you want to use this on a chiffon um, or, or silk or a very silky crepe, you understand what I'm saying? What you do is by the time you lay this out on the fabric, you're going to put your allowances on it. That the stay is going to be bigger than this you're going to have a bigger size of stay or better still fill the whole fabric first gum your stay let it be fully gummed on the fabric you want to cut the collar from then you start measuring the collar on it on the fabric and cut on the fabric i hope i'm not confusing you let me do a wrap up if you want to do soft fabric fuse the whole thing before cutting the stay because if you cut and you want to put the stay um, the shift so you're going to have it either it's or if it shrinks uh, is a, is a two-way thing put your stay first if it's going to shrink it will shrink then if you're going to try to stretch where you're doing that then you cut but if you're working on very thick fabrics do not put too much interfacing in fact some very thick fabrics do not need interfacing for anything just, just cut them out, out sew them and finish i'm very sure I have a video on the color, the denim colors on the channel. I'll drop it in the comment section as well. You can check th that out for future references. So let's start, let's move on. Now I've put my stay on the fabric. What, what I want to explain here is important. Please try to pay attention. Anytime you're putting your stay on fabric, do not iron stay, you gum it. Like you leave your iron there for like a few minutes or a few seconds, depending on the fabric and the kind of stay you're using. Allow it to melt in. Let the gum melt in so that it doesn't come out. And when you're done, try to check the edges if any part of it is coming out until you're sure that it is all secured. After you're sure it's all secured, you see when you're cutting the sides and the upper part, you're going to leave like half inch or one cm. But the lower part, there, we're going to cut to two parts. You know, the one, the, the two, two of this, one is on the other side. This first one, leave enough allowance that you will use to fold, to fold it in before you cut the second one. So when you're cutting, the stays your guideline. You just use it to fold this part in. Everything will be in. Then we're going to be stitching like half inch here. You see this when I am sewing. You can see that I notched some part here. That's because to give it some ease. It's a curve. And whenever you have curves in sewing, always think of there may be a reason for some notches here and there to ease it out. So here we are with them. We're going to use the first one to cut the second one. You see, you lay it on it. These two parts are the same. The upper, the sides are the same. But the lower part, you're going to leave like 1 cm or half inch or quarter inch, whatever you're very comfortable with. So to join it first to the to the body of the, the garments, either whatever you're making, shirt or whatever. So do not forget, you do the first one first, then these edges, they're going to be the allowances we're going to sew in. Do not cut both the same size, please. Fold this in before you cut the second one. It just gives you a better result anyways. Start by stitching this halfway, half inch in. Anytime you're not sure of how to make straight lines on your edges, what you do is just use an edge of your presser foot to guide your lines and it's a thing of an eye and hand coordination but with lots of practicing you're gonna get by you notch it all because it's a curved line And here you have the finished version, well laid and well done. You your own neatly when you're doing your, your own. Remember, 
Um, ignore all these parts because they are meant to be like um, to have been faced or maybe you have buttonholes. But this is just to give you a clear example of how to make your well laid bishop neck collar or mandarin collar or what you call it in your own sewing terms so see you in the next video and take a minute just a, just a second to click the subscribe button and to click a like if you really like this video and if you want more of it and if you have any questions my contacts are always in the comment section feel free to drop your questions or send me an email i will definitely respond to it till i see you next time keep the creative juice flowing